classify Alien Trilogy. It's not based on an original story, nor is it based on any one alien movie. Rather, it's a retelling of aliens with locations from Alien and Alien 3 thrown in. Now, at first glance, that sounds like a totally idiotic concept. But somehow, and I really don't know how, it actually works. And for the most part, the story does not really come up in the game at all, except for a few cutscenes here and there, and some text screens. Before getting into the game, let's first take a look at the cover for Alien Trilogy. Now, it's actually pretty good. It has a fairly well-drawn xenomorph head, with ribbons of its trademark drool hanging down. And overall, it really does get you in the mood to shoot some aliens. Oh, and you have to love this tagline. The complete Alien Trilogy in one black death white knuckle nightmare. Don't worry, it's not nearly as bad as that tagline makes it out to be. Besides, you don't see the LJN logo anywhere on it, do you? Now before we look at the game, let's take a look at the back. You've gotta love just how delightfully stupid this synopsis is. Now, it really doesn't make the game seem good at all. Especially this part here. Recon structural environment. Remove crate and barrel barricades. What is this? Wrecking crew meets the aliens? And this bottom part here just takes it all. Three alien queens! Oh, great. Three identical sprites with a high number of hit points. Wondrous. Over 30 acid-encrusted levels. Hmm. Why do I get the feeling that all 30 levels will look completely identical to one another? Oh, and look at this. It has gut-churning 3D action! Now, the graphics can't be that bad, even though when you look at the screenshots, you can't help but feel a bit of dread. Now, if you thought that was bad, look at this. In the not-too-distant future... Next Sunday, AD. The quaint concept of nations is a remote memory. Okay, then why are there still nations like Japan and the United Americas, and the fact that there are numerous independent colonies like Alexandria? Oh, and look at this. The company is all. Everything goes through the company. Even though Wayland Yutani is only one of many such large corporations, like Chisaga Corp, Grant Corp, and Pharmacom, Oh, and here is where it gets good. Will the Queen of Queens, great, now they have a Jesus alien, succeed in laying another savage generation in the guts of hapless planetary populations? And here is the dumbest part. Your Lieutenant Ripley and your fellow Marines have been wiped out. Uh, problem? Ripley was a flight officer on a commercial starship, not a Marine? But, this could explain why she wasn't in Alien's Earth Hive. Ugh, I will spare you the rest. But needless to say, the English in Alien 3, the gun was more coherent. I haven't seen a more inaccurate game story since Jurassic Park, the arcade game. You know, as horrible as this is, you really have to wonder why they even bothered. And with that, let's pop in Alien Trilogy. And take a look. As should be expected, the cutscenes and the text between levels are completely inaccurate. And some of this text is just mind-blowingly stupid. Look at this. You are advised to clear the entrance of barrels for the Marine drop crew. Uh, why wouldn't the Marines do that themselves? And also, why would you only send one Marine in first? Wouldn't it be more intelligent to send in, oh, I don't know, a squad of soldiers? Or Marines, in this case. So that your people won't be slaughtered piecemeal? The game itself is a first-person shooter Doom clone. Come on, get through! I know Ripley's tall, but this is just ridiculous. As should be expected, you can't look up or down, you can't crouch, you can't jump. And you also can't use the analog stick. Rather, you use the D-pad to move and the first shoulder pads to strafe left and right. And the controls are really the game's main deficiency. They're just too stiff, and you're really going to be hard-pressed to maneuver quickly enough not to take damage. 
Now, movement is a bit more realistic than found in other games at the time, but it feels more like your player has had a few hits of liquid courage prior to battle. It doesn't actually make movement worse, but it is rather humorous to say the least. Your main objectives are standard FPS fare, collect keys, kill things, fix things, collect other objects, really nothing you haven't seen before. Your enemies are 2D sprites, and they actually look pretty good, although, to nitpick, you and your weapons look like pieces of cardboard. The music itself isn't half bad, but unfortunately, it's not memorable in the slightest. But, it still works with the game. Sound design is also fairly good. With all the various aliens sounding like they should, and all the weapons have appropriate sounds, and even the pulse rifle sounds right. Level design is awful. It's so dark, and your view distance so short, that trying to find anything is a chore. Also, this is one of those games where you're going to be doing laps quite a bit. You know, I said earlier that this was a Doom clone. It almost seems like it was a trend for Aliens games to rip off other more successful games. Just look at Aliens the Arcade game. With the Aliens Arcade game, we got a pretty good Contra clone that had some improvements on the original game, like controllable vehicles and a life bar. All told, it was definitely an ARC clone, to say the least. With Alien Trilogy, on the other hand, we got a white job, or rather, just a basic clone. Not to say that a basic clone can't become more than he is, as was proven with Trooper Core, but still, Alien Trilogy is nothing more than a Doom clone, right down to pits of poisonous material. See, this is why you need to be able to jump. Gah, get up there already! Now, the levels are nothing special. They look a bit different as you go through the game, but for the most part, they're all pretty much identical to one another. And it should come to everyone's complete lack of surprise that the text screens get dumber and dumber. Like this. So there is a religion that doesn't allow you to become a mad scientist and experiment on aliens and humans. And God said, Thou shalt not construct this a laboratory for nefarious purposes, and thou shalt not experiment on the midnight black beast from the on the stars, nor shalt thou be able to experiment on thine own species. Hmm. Who would have thought? You know, and that's another problem. The prisoners were on another planet entirely, Fiona 161, not LV-426, meaning that this is yet another glaring error in this story. In the weapons department, this game is no Turok. You start out with a basic pistol that does very little damage, and you really don't want to use this thing at all, as it is pretty much useless except on face huggers and some humans. Almost immediately, you will find a shotgun. And it works on most mid-range enemies. It's not much weaker than the pulse rifle, and I would recommend using this on just about any enemy, excluding the bosses and the more stronger ones. The pulse rifle is pretty disappointing. Its cyclic rate is fairly low, as you can see here, and the bullets look a lot like phased plasma pulse beams, even though they are supposed to be bullets. This weapon isn't all that powerful. Look at how many shots it takes to kill a Xeno. Finally, its only saving grace is the grenades, and they work fairly well. I recommend using this weapon as a secondary weapon to the shotgun, and as a heavy weapon with the grenades. It seems to me that the smart gun isn't much better than the pulse rifle. It appears to be slightly more powerful, but not by much. The flamethrower works fairly well, and looks quite good for the time. And the flame has really aged quite well. It, of course, looks nowhere near as good as the polygonal flame effects on Turok 2. But it still looks decent in its own right. And that's all the weapons. You can get a number of mining charges, and they do work well as grenades. Facehuggers are the first enemy that you encounter. And this is where you need the ability to look up and down, because they are almost impossible to hit. This is also a problem with chestbursters. Unlike in the far superior AVP games, getting face-hugged is not an instant kill. 
Rather, they just stick to you and slide off like they think you're too pathetic to face hug or something. The next enemy that you encounter is the standard drone xenomorph. In all his pixelated glory, they don't look good at all. But still, you can at least identify them. You also have to face a number of so-called dog xenos that for some reason take considerably more damage than standard drones do. And for some reason, you also have to face a number of humans. Now, the game gives you an explanation as to why these humans are hostile. Unfortunately, that explanation is completely inaccurate. Now, it states that the reason that they're hostile is because they've been infected. Now, unless they've been infected by the T-Virus or something like that, that's not the case. Just because you have a chestburster inside you is not going to make you hostile. Because if that were the case, wouldn't Kane have attacked the Nostromo's crew once he awoke? Now, in all reality, the humans have been mentally dominated by the Queen, thus causing them to become hostile to other humans. The humans are actually decent enemies, as they can shoot back, thus varying the gameplay a bit. Later in the game, you have to face a number of other humans, but they are not infected. Rather, they are working for Leyland Yutani. They are a little tougher than the others, as they actually sport battle armor. And now we come to the much-hyped queens. Other than the fact you can't actually see anything when you enter the egg chamber, the queen fights are not all that special. Basically, circle strafing is the order of the day. And yes, all three queen fights are exactly the same, and they all look the same as well. Even with all its flaws, Alien Trilogy is still a decent FPS. If only for the fact that it's an Alien FPS. Now, I only recommend picking this up if you're a die-hard Aliens fan like me. And really, you're not going to get that much enjoyment out of it other than maybe five minutes of gameplay. Now, for next time, I am going to be reviewing the much more superior Alien 3 adaptation on the Super NES. But for now, this is General Watts wishing you good Corridor 7, good Descent, or whatever makes you happy.